Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. Today I'm joined again by Andres and uh, we're going to be talking about yeast. We've got some nice active fermentation bubbling away in the background in our brewery. So things that you should know about yeast, um, you're going to hear terminology, you're going to read about it in spec sheets. So I guess the best place to start is the sensory profile and then work our way back. What is the sensory profile of yeast whenever people are selecting a yeast? You know, as a brewer, you know, the first thing when you want to design a new recipe, yeah. it, the first thing that comes to your mind is like the flavor. So yeah. what kind of flavor you want to express in your beer. Once you know that, and then you need to, you know, what kind of characteristics of the yeast strains needs to express that flavor. Yeah. So, um, so well, first is just to, to, to find what to see from each strain, okay, this strain uh, gives me this fruity character, or does yeah. it give me more a neutral character to express more, you know, the the hop, the hop uh, aroma, or you know, or you know, different characteristics. The next part is okay, how my yeast should perform okay. during fermentation. So the one of the main parameters, okay, uh, is attenuation. Attenuation means, you know, so how. Um, how much uh, uh, sugars, you know, the extract the yeast can ferment yeah. in your wort, and that gives information about what will be the the final alcohol content in your beer. Yeah. But also, it will give information about what will be the the final gravity, uh, and therefore the final the, the the final extract in your product, yeah. which has an impact on the you know the mouthfeel and and the body of, yeah. of the beer. Uh, another parameter is um, alcohol tolerance, you know, yeah. especially when you're dealing with strong beers. Yeah. To see if the yeast is capable to, 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 to deal, you know, to tolerate certain, you know, alcohol content yeah. in beer. Is there something to, to be aware of um, specific to the strain or maybe check yeah. what range it, it can work from? Yeah, yeah. When, when you're dealing with strong beers, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, barley wines or in, in imperial stouts or imper you know double IPAs, but also if uh, if you want to deal with high gravity brewing, yeah. you know, which is not necessarily just for uh, uh, macro breweries or large breweries, also you know craft brewers can do it. It's completely valid yeah. if you want to optimize the fermentation, the fermentation cellar capacity. Yeah. You know. If you're looking at attenuation and you've selected a yeast based on the sensory flavor and aroma profile that you're looking for and then you go to attenuation you'll see in the spec sheet it says high, low, medium, medium to low, whatever the descriptor is. If someone's designing that recipe, are they best placed then to work that out using one of the online brewing calculators for example? So say, um, like we're not affiliated with them, but say you use Brewer's Friend or Brew Father or something like that there, you go on and you select the, the grist that you're putting together and you select the yeast it should work out the attenuation for them and give them the starting gravity and the final gravity just yeah. to try and help the home brewers at home that maybe Absolutely. aren't familiar with this. Yeah, you know? that's, like, that's like a starting point actually. Yeah. yeah, so as you know, there is like, there are different kind of, you know, apps, applications, uh, brewing applications that can give you, you know, uh, basics, uh, you know, basic information about uh, how to design a recipe. Yeah. Of course that helps you and uh, but of course you always need to verify, yeah. you know, that uh, in the lab, you know. We've covered attenuation and um, you know the sensory aspect of it. The next thing that, that people, maybe no one with any experience in brewing will hear flocculation. So, flocculation, that's right. Know, um, if you just explain to the guys what, what exactly that flocculation means. Flocculation is, means is the ability of the yeast to, uh, to gather together, you know, to yeah. form clusters, you know. And, and so once they, you know, they, they form these clusters, you know, this, they flow, they, then they will uh, precipitate, or you're going to settle down in the bottom of yeah. the fermentation vessel, yeah. and that has an impact, of course, on the clarification of your beer, you know. Okay. And of course, depends on the beer style you want to deal with, you know. If you want to have a lager, which normally they are crystal clear beers, mm -hmm. you, you obviously, you, you, the, you have to choose a G strain that is high flocculent. Yeah. But if you want to create, uh, you know, let's say a, a hazy, you know, a New England IPA, you want exactly the opposite. Yeah. Or, or you know, or a wheat, a German wheat beer, for yeah. instance. 
that they are you know, low flocculent yeast strains because it's part of the uh, profile of this style. Well, when it comes to you know, yeast flocculation and we talk about uh, you know, the AB uh, yeast products, we have, for instance, if you comparing, you know, like non-flocculant yeast, you know, we got the the new E or you know the juicy the New England uh, yeast. This one is low flocculant, and this is the the purpose, you know, to is just also to promote haze in your in your beer. But if you compare this against, let's say, uh, the clean ale, which is originally from Sierra Nevada. It's uh, an American ALG strain, which is uh, high flocculent, and, and, and this one, it will give you a quite clear, you know, ale. So, um, another example, we got, uh, let's say, let's talk about English ALG strains. We got the Big Bolt uh, Fermo Ale AY3. This one is also high flocculent, but English uh, ALG strain and uh, which will give you as a very clear, I would say, uh, ales. And while you got uh, the Yorkshire uh, Fermo Ale G strain, which is uh, another English uh, ale strain, but this one is low flocculent. And uh, flavor-wise, uh, they're quite different. One is, you know, uh, cleaner than the other. The one has more, uh, let's say, the Yorkshire more slightly more citrusy, while the Big Bolt uh, AY3 it will give you a more, you know, it will express more the, the malt backbone of your beer. And um, this is uh, when it comes to flocculation, and um, and another aspect is the diacetyl. Okay. You know, especially for lagers, your strains, the uh, um, you know. Um, Lagers are, you know, beers that are, you know, normally neutral, you know, in, in flavor. Yeah. So it's very easy to pick up flavors, you know, like yeah. diacetyl, which give you this kind of buttery kind of uh, notes, yeah. which is not a bad thing in some other styles, in some ales, for instance, you know. Actually, it's part of the profile yeah. of the beers. So uh, this is another consideration, you know, uh, you need to look at when yeah. you are designing a recipe. And uh, is pH important in yeast selection? Well, in conventional beer styles, uh, not really, because m most of them they're dealing with the same yeah. uh, pH range. You know, we're yeah. talking about you know the word pH between 5.2 to 5.5, yeah. and you end up with a, a beer pH uh, between 4.2 to 4.4. Yeah. Okay, but now when you're dealing with uh, sour beers, that's a different story. Yeah. And then of course the pH is, is, is very important, it's one of the main um, uh, factors, you know, that you so, need to consider. So if you've used a um, kettle souring process or some other process um, and you go to add a yeast after it's soured, do you, is there a way of checking, you know, what way that yeast will perform in that wort? So say it's drop the 3.1. Is there any strains that you just wouldn't use because it wouldn't perform well at that low pH? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's well known, you know, low pH and uh, affects the performance of the yeast because okay. you basically you're stressing out the yeast. Yeah. The same as when you're dealing with cold temperatures or high pressures. Yeah. So um, uh, re domesticated brewing yeast, they, they will be uh, dramatically affected uh, with a pH when it's already below uh, 3.6. Okay. So and um, so this this is this is important to yeah. consider, you know. And and again, it's a different story when you're dealing with sou uh, sour yeast. Some yeast perform totally differently at different temperature ranges. For example, you know, you could take a, a wheat yeast and ferment it at a lower temperature and throw off some banana flavors. You could Correct. ferment it much higher and throw off yeah. clove. Is there any of the A, B yeast strains that do things like that, fermented at different temperatures? You know, it's, um, it's like a general rule, yeah. you know. Higher, temp higher temperatures, obviously the yeasts are more active, yeah. and therefore they're going to produce, you know, higher levels of flavor-active compounds, okay. you know. And we are talking about, you know, higher alcohols, esters, you know, even aldehydes, ketones, organic acids, you yeah. know, and thiols, for instance. And um, 
So in the case like wheat beers, you know, as, yeah. as you mentioned, um, so it's, it's known, you know, if you are dealing with lower temperatures, I mean, we're talking about, you know, 18 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius, yeah. then you emphasize more the, the clove-like flavors, you know, yeah. so uh, the phenolics. When you increase the temperature, you know, above 22 degrees Celsius, uh, it's not a general rule, also depends from strain to strain, but yeah. uh, you, you're going to emphasize more the formation of esters and higher alcohols, and yeah. therefore more these banana notes, you know, okay. yeah. from the acetyl acetate. Yeah. So did I have that the other way around? Yeah. Wheat beer yeast is Well, this is what I learned. I don't lower know if temperatures, clove, what higher I, temperatures. From my experience, that, yeah. but I don't know if there's a general rule, you know, yeah. maybe. Okay. The same with the uh, lager yeast, you know. Yeah. If you're dealing with a, you can always brew, you know, even ales with lager yeast, you know. Yeah. But they just need to be careful because, you know, the, the, these yeasts were adapted to cold conditions. And of course, they can produce higher alcohols and, and yeah. esters, but uh, not uh, in a very, uh, not in a rounded way, you know. Yeah. So normally, when you're dealing with lager yeast and higher temperatures, because maybe your cooling system didn't work, yeah. you get really harsh flavors, you know, yeah. because the production of uh, higher alcohols went just too high, yeah. you know. We, we did some experiments there and we, we did a fast lager video that's available on the channel. Um, we fermented a lager strain at a high temperature under pressure yeah. and we think that the, the pressure suppressed the esters and allowed... It's, 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 this is the whole trick, you know, yeah. how, how, to, how you repress the yeast. You could do it, uh, you know, with temperature yeah. or with the pressure, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, basically. And, and so it's more how uh, how you want to play your cards, you know. So you want yeah. you can brew lagers, at, you know, at, at shorter times with yeah. under pressure, you know. And uh, but at the same time, also you can do, you know, uh, ales at cold temperature just to have a more, uh, you know, more neutral flavor. Yeah. And if you want to spread some specific, you know, hop, uh, you know, uh, profile or even flavor ingredients, fruits, for yeah. instance. So yeah, it's just about how how you play with the activity of the yeast. You know? yeah. Look guys, there's a lot of things you can take into consideration when choosing your yeast. What we wanted to cover in this brief video is a brief explanation of that terminology on attenuation, fluctuation, sensory, temperature ranges, alcohol ranges. It's all on the product descriptions on the Get A Brewed websites. Um, we just wanted to give you an overview. Look, so that's giving you a bit more of an understanding on terminology surrounding yeast. If you need any further assistance, don't hesitate to drop us a message, a comment below, or get in touch via some of the socials or whatever. We're more than happy to help. So until next time, happy brewing.